thousand members in over 400 chapters of college campuses and high schools and some post-college. So there were about 100,000 active members. And we said, no, no more SES is too liberal. It's not revolutionary. We need revolution. So we formed a, a, a guerrilla underground called the Weather Underground. And there's even a movie about it. And you can watch that movie. Some of you might have seen it. Uh, I'm featured in one of other people. And, uh, uh, we set about uh, uh, doing exemplary bombings and things like that, which would show who the enemy was. Uh, the only problem was the first people we killed were three of our own people in an accident in New York on March 6, 1970. And uh, in a way, that was uh, obviously tragic, but in another way, it was lucky because we had become at that moment actual full-blown terrorists in the, in the traditional sense of the word, which is attacking innocent people. We were, uh, the people involved were going to blow up a dance at Fort Dix where there would be non-commissioned officers in their days. And we were just gonna, everybody, everybody in this country is guilty. So anyway, fortunately that didn't happen. And there's a lot more to the story and my own involvement. I got out of it actually pretty early, but I stayed a fugitive um, uh, until 1977. So I was a fugitive uh, from 1970 to 77, from the time I was 23 uh, to the time I was just about 30, or I turned 30. And uh, um, um, during that time, um, 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 I got together with my, my wife at the time, and we had a baby under them, born under them. And um, anyway, I turned myself in in 77, and nothing happened. I could talk about that, and, 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 you know, that, that uh, why that happened. Um, I waited until the war was over. The war, the war was officially over on April 30th, 1975. Uh, when uh, the Vietnamese conquered uh, Saigon uh, uh, from the Americans and their puppets. And um, um, uh, that was the end of the war. So after 75, I thought about turning myself in. But while the war was going, I wouldn't give them that kind of thing. Um, nothing happened. I moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and went, finished my degree in uh, College of Education. And I became a teacher at community college. And, organizer and I shut up about all this stuff for about 25 years I never talked about it. And, well not never, occasionally. The, the reason being that I wasn't very proud of some of the decisions, you know. Um, ending SDS at the height of the war, 69 was still the height of the war. When you when you go to the, the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, you descend and the names get, get higher because you're because you're getting into it and it's brilliant design and and the the, the, the deepest highest number place is 1969 68 69 and so at the height of the war we ended the uh, SDS because we our little faction and I in a group of about eight or ten people made a decision it was totally arrogant totally elitist in the worst kind of way, it, it, it's, one, it's one of the problems with leadership. Somebody asked the question about leadership. Um, and in order to do the revolutionary thing, and in doing that, um, we, we helped split the movement. We, we not only did the work, the FBI uh, infiltrated, and they were very happy that we ended SDS. But I can assure you the decision to end SDS was not made by police agents. It was made by me and my friend. And I'm pretty damn sure we are not, I was not a, a, a police agent. <laughs> they should have paid. <laughs> but Back wages. Um, anyway, um, we, we split the movement over the over the, 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 the bogus issue of violence, militancy, uh, when we should have united as many people as possible. And I, 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 my conclusion is nonviolence is the only possible strategy that could ever win in this country. And that violence will only play into the hands of the, of the government and, and the power, the 1% behind them. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to learn this evening that Occupy Iowa has, has been crystal clear on this question. Other Occupies have not. Because um, there's always a bunch of kids who want to act out. You know, I was one of them. 
you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I can talk more about that. So in 03, a few things happened. Um, one was the United States attacked Iraq. And I, there was not an anti-imperialist movement. There was an anti-war movement. And it was spontaneous, but it didn't last. It didn't, it lacked the model that we had. The model was handed to us by the labor movement and, and by the um, uh, civil rights movement. So I decided to tell my story. Well, the other thing that happened was this movie came out, and, uh, The Weather Underground, and, and it was um, um, uh, nominated for an Academy Award in documentary. It was a great movie. And I found like people wanted to hear what I have to say about this stuff. Because um, I'm, I'm one of the few voices of reason in the movie. Uh, <laughs> well, some people would say, I'm, I'm the right winger. I'm the right winger. <laughs> um, and so I started telling this story to kind of differentiate, to kind of help people um, figure out uh, something about this history of organizing versus a history of self-expression, which was essentially what we were doing. See, the, the, since 03, the model that's been in most people's minds is you call a demonstration and everybody comes. That's what I call the self-expression model. You know, you hold up a sign and people will rally to the sign. Occupy is pretty much doing that too. But that's not how movements are built. It's much more complicated. So um, anyway, uh, I've been sort of on the road from 03 to now. Uh, um, um, telling the story and getting into discussions. So uh, that's the end of the story. And anybody have anything to say or add or comment or anything useful or anything at all? Yes? Grinnell College students participated in the Days of Rage in 1969. How few? Huh? What was your question? They what did you say? I said that Grinnell College students participated in the Days oh, really? of Rage in Chicago. There's an exhibit in the basement of Burling that contains information about those activist activities. So they were there, they got arrested, the FBI came to campus. I don't know if you were here, but by golly, the FBI was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, um, uh, is, there, uh, is there like an exhibit or is that... Yes, there's an exhibit in the basement of Burling. It's about Grinnell activism between 1969, eh, 1966 to 1973. It just went up. And there's my partner. Don't shoot. We put it up. <laughs> so we're going to Important incident in '62 with Grinnell, or '61, Grinnell people going to Washington uh, around uh, atomic uh, test ban. Yes. 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 What's that? Grinnell 14. The Grinnell 14. Yes. Yeah. Important history. Uh, what what what, is, what denomination? What church denomination began uh, Grinnell? Congregational. 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 New York from New England. Any other comments, questions? Yes. Yeah, okay, Mark, so when you were telling your story, you you talked about sort of the shift from three days of Columbia, where SDS was fighting against like the war in Vietnam especially, to the shift um, sort of around the days of the days of range, where all of a sudden instead you were talking about uh, you know sort of overhaul of the system. Right. And you kind of and you did revolution as opposed to ending the war. Right. right. And you kind of spun it as part of also the shift towards towards violence. Right. So, right. so I'm asking, I, I guess, I mean, are you saying that we need to have specific goals in mind, like ending a war, as opposed to like overhaul of the system? Or do you think that like a radical goal to try and like, change, like meet these problems at their roots, is not the best way to go about? I, you know, it, that, that, that question. Did everybody get the, get the question? Yeah. 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 That question is still up in the air. I can just answer it for myself, which is, I work for um, progressive candidates for Congress and for local offices. People who want to institute policy that is that will transform things in, now in the real world now. Policy issues around politics, and I, that's what I'm doing. 
I would like people to be out there questioning the whole system. That'd be great, you know. And I, and in a way, Occupy has been doing that up to now quite effectively, you know. So I, I can't say that Occupy should be working for the local candidate, you know, which is probably not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. But it, 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 it's obviously a tension, you know. And 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 I, in my story, I can tell you. We broke up anti-war rallies because they weren't radical. We were that arrogant that we knew there was only one way. I think, I think the, the, probably the answer to the question is that there will be a coalition built between people like me who are not revolutionary uh, and, and who want to transform the Democratic Party into a party of the people, and people like, I'll just say, you, who want to change the whole fucking system. There will be some kind of coalition, and we'll work together, and I think, I think we should. But in this history, in the story that I'm telling, we actively opposed our closest allies. And we, we did it in the, the name of anti-racism. We said we will oppose the system that gave us a racist war in Vietnam and gave us the oppression of black people at home. And we're doing this in solidarity with revolutionaries like the Black Panther Party and the Vietnamese. And the Vietnamese said to us, don't do it. Unite as many people as possible against the war. The Black Panthers said, don't do this. You know, unite as many people as possible here in, 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 in effective and more effective ways. Right? But we were tripping out on our own, you know? So I guess, you know, you don't have a lot of these anarchist kids, the black blockers, who go around and screw up demonstrations because they, they, their, their basic principle is you can't tell me what to do. And, and if I, if I want to fight cops, if I want to fight pigs, I'll fight pigs, you know? But what they're doing in their arrogant way is they're undercutting your nonviolent movement. You know? So there will always be these faction, this factionalism, and um, um, I don't know what's the solution. My, on, on the question of violence, my solution is I go around to places where there are significant numbers of black blockers, and I say, the only kind of people who advocate violence now are cops or very stupid people. <laughs> and they don't want to hear that, because they're not cops and they don't think they're so I'm now adding, I was one of you. I was very stupid. <laughs> I was acting out. I was trying to be macho. I was trying to be a 19-year-old kid who proved himself, which is essentially what it's about. So I, I, this is a long answer to your question, but it, I, I think we're going to have to build coalition between people like you and people like me.